and welcome back. Now on the workbench below, you can see that there's a, an LED display, two digits, and we're controlling that using just one GPIO line. Well, all right, not one. Um, as you can see, there's two digits here, and they require a GPIO line for each segment of that LED, but each digit is itself only controlled using one line, not two. And if you had four, like a bedside clock, you wouldn't need four, you'd still only need two. How do we do that then? And uh, yeah, I should have done this for my other project, shouldn't I? Yes, indeed. It's one of those solder destroying moments, really, where you suddenly think, you know, I've designed the circuit, I've designed the PCB, I've got it all set up, but mm, something was nagging and I thought I could have done this in a simpler way, I think. But to then do the proof of concept with the new design, it was going to take too long. So I thought, no, we'll have to stick with what we got. So the PCB is being made even as we speak. The components have all arrived. Um, but I thought, I still think I can do it a different way. So I ordered some of these. Look, these little twin um, LEDs, seven segment LEDs that you see running here in a demo sketch. Every now and again, if you look at this, it goes from this sort of orange to a sort of a funny red. It sort of, it sort of fades out. There it goes on the zero, look. Yeah, that's just an artifact of me filming at a slightly different refresh rate to what that's being uh, shown at, which is all to do with the multiplexing, really. So what do we mean? Let's let's take a couple of steps back and go, how can we control multiple LEDs? And when I say LEDs, I mean the actual digits themselves, not the individual segments that make up the digit. How can we control more than one by using fewer GPIO lines, whether that's from an Arduino or some other microcontroller, or indeed a piece of hardware like the 74HC595, which I'm using in my other project. Let's see what we mean by that. I want to give a big shout out to JLC PCB, who not only give you five pieces for two dollars, they now give you free assembly too. Let's have a look at that. The full details on their free assembly are on the web page, but in summary, when you place an order, you get a coupon and you can apply that coupon to the assembly fee. Done and dusted. Easy. And there are two levels of assembly. There's the economic assembly and then there's the standard assembly. Now, the details are on their website, but basically single sided hobbyist type assembly is the cheapest. And if you want a small production run or prototyping run, you can do both sides through hole and SMD, by the way. So go and have a look at that page, too. And if you're wondering where you can get the parts from, they can globally source your parts for you. You just give them a bill of materials and they'll go and source them and contact you and show you exactly how much they cost and where they're getting them from. And, uh, and it's so easy. You definitely want to try JLC PCB right now. Now, seven segment LED digits are nothing magical. They're just seven individual LEDs, as we see here, numbered A through B all the way around in a clockwise fashion. G in the middle um, is usually a decimal point or a colon. Not really part of the digit, but it's still the eighth bit, if you like, the eighth GPIO line you'll need to drive that if you're going to drive a decimal point. But the fact they're arranged in this digit format in which we can then display the numbers 0 through 9 and indeed A through F in hexadecimal format it just happens to be, well, a, a serendipitous moment, really. Easy for me to say, I oh, know, yes. But the actual GPIO pins that are driving all this have no idea that we're displaying something that we can read as a 2 or an 8 or a 6 or whatever. It just happens to be a number of LEDs being displayed at any one time. Now that's great and if you can imagine a single LED with eight or at least seven segments plus the DP it's, it's easy enough to understand how we might do that and and yes before you even mention it it is expensive in terms of GPIO isn't it? Yes a single digit like this requires seven or eight GPIO lines to drive each one of these LEDs, just the same as if you were driving any other LED, plus then one common ground pin. Now, you can get these LEDs in either common cathode or common anode format. I prefer the common cathode, it just makes more sense to me, because you're supplying the current to flow through the LED that then goes to ground, rather than with a common anode method where you tend to 
have the power supplied by VCC and your GPIO pin then sinks that current to ground. So throughout this video, we'll be talking about common cathode. I think they're easier for beginners to understand. What's that? You want to see a diagram? OK, let me let me give you a, a little diagram that I've got over there and uh, we'll see exactly how it looks in symbolic terms, i.e. circuit diagram. So what we've got here, I want you to look at that bottom bit first, yeah, that bit there, look, you see? Now we've got these, these LEDs here labelled, look, A through G plus the decimal point, yeah? And they're all connected to these pins here on the actual device itself. So for example, the A segment, which is at the top there, so it's A, that's actually pin 7 on this device. Uh, and this device goes 1 here, 1 through 5, and then the top 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. They are, there's 10 up there. So to find out how you light up the top segment, you have to look at the data sheet because they're all different and say, right, that A segment at the top is controlled by pin 7. Great. OK, for a single LED digit, it's easy enough to understand, isn't it? You, you set your GPIO pin that you're using to control uh, segment A high, and that's it. It will light up. Digit 1, which is this one, uh, this left one here, is fine. They're all connected like that. But pin 9 is where the cathodes are all connected together, hence common cathode, to pin 9. And if you put ca common cathode pin 9 to ground, then any one of these LEDs will lit up as long as there's power being supplied here. Uh, don't forget the current limiting resistor. Because if you were to connect 5 volts to one of these pins, and this pin here, the common cathode, to ground, you'd get massive amounts of current trying to flow, and you'd literally burn these out, as you would with any LED, of course. So the cheapskate method of doing it... Sorry, I'll cut that bit out. The, um, the cost-effective method of doing it, of course, is to put a single resistor from pin 9, in this case, to ground. So a 220 ohm would do, limits it to about 10 milliamps. Except it's far from ideal because the current that might be going down any number of these LEDs, including all of them, if you're trying to display the 8, um, is all being shunted down pin 9 through that one resistor. So the luminosity, the brightness of the individual segments of that LED drops. Now, how noticeable that is, well, it depends very much, I guess, on your LED itself but it is most definitely noticeable. So what's the best way of doing it? Well, the best way is to put a resistor in series with each of these input lines here. So put a 220 ohm resistor in line with each one of these, then you can connect pin 9 to ground, and that's great. Me, though, being cheapskate, sorry, cost-effective, um, and because it's just for error reporting in my case, I'm using a single resistor from here to ground. So what do we mean by multiplexing then? So we've we've set the pins, the required pins, to turn on, say, the first digit on the number 4. Great. And then we connect the cathode to ground, and lo and behold, the number 4 appears on. Just like that one over there now. Look, yeah, 4 in the beginning. Great. OK. But now we want that digit there to display something. Yeah, and, and not a 4. Oh, we don't want to duplicate the information. We want a totally different digit to appear here. So what you do then, you set all the pins to the correct values for this digit and quickly turn the first digit off and the second one on. Just going back to that circuit diagram quickly, what you would do is set the correct outputs here to turn on whichever number you want to display. So initially it would be 4, and to display 4 you need uh, elements F, G, B and C. So you set F, B, G and C up correctly, turn on the cathode for that digit, yeah, let's talk about digit 1, and lo and behold, 4 would appear on there, and nothing on here, because we haven't turned this one on yet. But then you want, say, say you wanted 1 on here, let's keep it simple, 1, so B and C. So what you'd quickly do is set the pins B and C on, and all the others off, and then quickly switch off this digit by turning this pin here off, and switching that one on. Hang on, Ralph, you're saying that's going to, like, flicker then, isn't it? One's going on and one's coming off. Exactly. Exactly so. That's what happens. You turn one on 
and the other one goes off and then you put the other value you want to display in the second digit on and turn the other one off how does that work now that's not going to look very nice is it well this is where thanks to evolution we have persistence of vision if you turn one on and the other off and do that quickly enough your eye no longer sees the fact they're turning on and off you just see two digits and i can demonstrate that with this little project on my workbench right so i'm going to reset the arduino because the project initially will display each of those digits that you see there counting up now first one then the other in that very on off fashion and it will speed up and up and up and up and up and you'll see by the virtue of persistence of vision multiplexing from the electronics point of view that you'll see it as you do now so let's reset and look a4 and it's flicker 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 on off on off but gradually the two digits are not so much flickering on and off as just being a little bit jittery and suddenly you get proper digits as i said that that funny fading out on the digits occasionally that's just the fact i'm recording at a, a different frequency to what they're being displayed and that is multiplexing so how is it then that i'm actually saving a digital line then to control these leds well if you look at this picture you'll see that there's the microcontroller on the left with the pins a to g plus the dp uh, which has to be connected to the corresponding pins on the other side, which are probably almost definitely not in the same order. Fine. But if you look at point B, the common cathode, that has to be connected to ground via a current limiting resistor, or you do it at the other end uh, on the incoming side, but whichever way you need a current limiting resistor. So B has to be switched on and off at the correct time, controlled by point A, which is the common cathode or multiplexing sometimes called strobing uh, pin on your microcontroller so what's the traditional solution then at this point so traditionally you'd need one bjt or something similar um, per digit and as you can see point b up there via the limiting resistor is switch them on that transistor to bring the digit to ground and therefore light up any uh, led segments but you would need one transistor per LED digit. So what have I done that's different then? So what I've done is to use one P channel MOSFET and one N channel MOSFET to control um, the digits in the same way as you would have done with a BJT but the gates on these MOSFETs are connected together. So you only need one pin from your Arduino to turn them on or off by virtue of the fact that the N channel will be on when the pin is high and the P channel will be on when the um, GPIO pin is low. Simples. And just for complete clarity, here's the circuit diagram in all its glory with the two MOSFETs connected together with their gates connected together as well via that one pin from the microcontroller that I've named their multiplex. But, well, that's just me making up names. And that's it. So I've saved a GPIO pin. And the same could be done if there were further pins on there as well. Uh, I've never seen this done before, so I claim the first. Do I, do I get some sort of prize or not? And that that works for all your bedside clocks they're all the same but four digits not just two and i just guessed really i said well display the first digit for 10 milliseconds then set the other digit up correctly the way you want to see it and display that okay we're done for today but i've got a favor to ask uh, please uh, if you've got something to say if you liked this you know video in some way and you've got a comment please put a comment down below that helps this channel tremendously uh, and if you like it if you are mildly entertained or thought oh that's interesting please do give it a like yeah look at that yeah like it because um youtube like it when people like it yeah i know it gets offered to other people and don't forget don't forget subscribe but tick the bell otherwise you'll never hear from me again subscribe tick the bell right it's a two-fold operation why it's two-fold not just one i don't know but that's the way youtube works okay we're done and dusted now i'll see you in the next video i hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting there are plenty more videos to choose and a couple are shown below and if you'd like to subscribe to this channel just click on my picture below and enjoy the rest of the videos thanks for watching